Hello and welcome to another episode of John Versations. I am John Graham and I am here at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Orlando, Florida, and I am delighted to be joined by a friend from last year and possibly years before that, Rick Welch is, uh, Rick Eldridge, yeah. <laughs> not Rick Welch, he's such a good friend, I forgot his last name. Um, Rick Eldridge is here. Rick is a, uh, I mean, a filmmaker from uh, a long time right. with some incredible hits in the, in the faith-based community. The one I was explaining to my wife last night when we talked, um, I said, you remember the Hermie series? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Hermie with, uh, with Tim Conway and, and Don was, Knotts. And yeah, Don Knotts. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful kids program from back in the day. Yeah. But Rick is still at it and doing incredible work. And we are also joined by Brad Minns. Brad is um, known, I get, help me with the title. He's got the greatest comeback yeah. in the deaf tennis olympics right that's right okay. on a tennis court he uh, you know he was able to in the final gold medal round you know of the olympics he was down two ga- two sets five games 40 love so he loses a point he loses a game yeah he's gone yeah you know, and he came all the way back and, and won the won the gold medal fantastic Phenomenal. fantastic story and i just watched the trailer I, i'll cut it in at some point in the interview but fantastic story brad now, tell us a little bit about your story. I have to tell you, Brad um, reads lips. Uh, his family made a choice to um, ask him to learn that rather than teaching him sign language. And so I know a little sign language, and he said, you might know more than me. <laughs> so uh, anyway, Brad, um, t- tell me about your story and how, uh, how did y- you weren't born deaf. You, uh, yeah, I lost my hearing when I was three years old, and my parents had to decide whether to put me in hearing schools or deaf schools. They decided to put me in hearing schools because my mother wanted me to speak orally, and um, it was a difficult road. Um, it took a lot of uh, support from my family, and without their love and support, I don't know where I would be. But uh, along the way, my mother got me into tennis. She thought it would help me overcome adversity, it was one of the toughest things I ever had to do. I didn't really enjoy tennis at the beginning, but uh, my family pushed me and supported me and they encouraged me not to give up on tennis. And I'm glad they didn't because when I was in college, I got a scholarship playing for University of Toledo. And my coach happened to have a newspaper clipping about this big advertising tryouts for the World Games for the Deaf. Now, up until that point, I never met a deaf person. I, I didn't know any deaf people. Um, so I tried out for the World Games. My dad and I went to Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., and for the first time, we experienced deaf culture. It wow. was amazing. And uh, we felt kind of left out because of the language barrier. Yeah. We didn't understand sign language. They couldn't read lips or communicate orally. So it, it was a challenge. And uh, Rick does a great job of showing those uh, challenges in the movie. And uh, so it's an inspirational film that will help people understand a little bit better about what it's like being deaf in a hearing world. Well, you were not only deaf in a hearing world, you were speaking in, in not really hearing, but reading lips in a deaf world. So you were kind of lost between both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm right in the middle. I don't <laughs> understand the hearing world 100%. It's very difficult. I have to read lips. If someone's back is turned to me, I won't understand what they're saying. And, of course, I don't know sign language. So when I'm with deaf people, I have to take a, a notepad and a pen and have the person write down what they're saying. And uh, so that's how I communicate with wow. the deaf. I took sign language in college. And uh, I was the only deaf person in the class, <laughs> and uh, everybody else got an A, but I got a D. So wow. I was kind of discouraged uh, with my sign language uh, yeah. progress, but I'm, I won't give up. I will keep trying. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Rick, um, let me ask you this. How did you discover Brad's story? Well, through a mutual friend of ours, uh, I was given his book. You know, okay. There's a, a great book about his story. And um, we met and uh, talked about it. He's, uh, he just expressed his desire to, to be able to, to really tell the story as an inspiration. And it's a great story of overcoming, of, of uh, redemption, and, and uh, you know, calling out to God. And God answers that many years later before he, he actually turned his life to the Lord. But phenomenal story. So as I, uh, you know, we talked about it, it took about five years, I think, to finally 
begin to put all the elements together and, and make the film. So excited to be with it. And then watching the trailer, I see you have two of my friends that are also in the film. Yeah. Um, Aaron and Drew, Aaron Bethay and Drew Waters. Um, worked with them on SBC uh, Coast to Coast last year, which I just learned was right after they finished working with you. So yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah. Well, Aaron and, and, uh, and Drew are, are fantastic, and, and we needed... Uh, we wanted to be as authentic with with uh, the story because it goes through periods of history, through his as a three year old and all the way up through the through the tournament. So mom and dad, yeah, or or Aaron and and Drew, and they did a great job of that, and uh, and I think resembled his family very well, and uh, and it was a great fit. Uh, you know, his his dad was a very gregarious, outgoing, outgoing, <laughs> you know, kind of you know jokester, and I said, eh, that's true. Yeah, all day. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome when we see a film that elevates a disability, you know. There's not a lot that I know of. I mean, there's a few very noteworthy films that deal with hearing impaired people. Obviously, you've got Helen Keller and those mm -hmm. kinds of situations. But it's not very common. Right. I, I feel like this, this is a, a story that needs to be told and needs to be brought back to American consciousness, right. you know, about about what it's like to be hearing impaired and yeah. I didn't even know there was a deaf Olympics <laughs> yeah. yeah well I think it, it it has so many great messages in it I mean we deal with the whole bullying issue because mm. anyone that has a disability or is a little different from the normal kid right is going to get beat up on and 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 laughed at and 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 jeered and and that happened to, to Brad you know, he had in the early days they didn't have the hearing aids they have today which you can hardly see you know, he had something that almost looked like a bra that he had to wear around his body and put his, you know, and, and you know, and people would make fun of him. Sure. And so we dealt with that. Uh, we, we dealt with all of those, uh, you know, the idea of, of perseverance, of overcoming, of, of uh, you know, never giving up, which is the title of the movie. Right. And so there are a lot of great messages there that, um, in fact, there's a, one of my favorite lines in the movie. Uh, you know, the mom and dad were not able to be at the, championship match because they, they had a, a late flight and got delayed kind of like some people did coming here <laughs> and um, because of weather and stuff and so he he would always you know look up at his parents in the stands they weren't there and so in the end when he's doing some interviews and that kind of thing uh he he talks about how you know i i, I came back i made it and his mom says brad you've been coming back your whole life mm -hmm. and uh just a phenomenal story of of a perseverance of how we can all make it, how we can do it, especially with God's help. You know, yeah. his cry to God, I think, was that turning point. That's so, so awesome. So, Brad, what's it like to see your story on the big screen? It's a blessing. It's a huge blessing. When I was growing up, books and movies were my two favorite things. Mm. And uh, so I would go to school and uh, hardly learn anything in school. I would have to come home, and my mother is the one who really was my teacher, taught me to read, taught me to write, taught me math. I had to spend a lot of time outside of the classroom learning what was going on in the classroom. And uh, so she would make me read books out loud to the family and uh, teach me to practice pronouncing my words, comprehending what I was reading. And uh, so books, I love books. And then movies, I love movies. I've always loved movies that have an inspirational message. Movies, Rocky, Rudy, Miracle on Ice, uh, things like that. So deep down, my dream was to have a book and a movie. And uh, well, after the book was published, I passed that book out for a real long time. And people started to say, you should make a movie. You should make a movie. People were coming up and saying, a lot of people won't read a book, but they will watch a movie. <clears throat> and so I wrote, wrote this uh, down in my prayer request. Mm. Week after week, I would write this down in my prayer request. and. Uh, so God answered my prayer when he brought Rick Eldridge and his crew to uh, bring this dream to the big screen. It's a blessing. I'm really happy to see it happening. It's awesome. So um, let me ask you, Rick, when does it come out? September the 1st. September and, uh, 1st. So uh, yes, Labor Day weekend, uh, great time to, to, to get out and see the film. Uh, that's also the U.S. Open, which is one of the biggest events that happens in tennis. Everybody will be talking about tennis. Uh, of course, Stan Smith. One of the icons of tennis is in the movie, and he'll be very active at the uh, U.S. Open, and we're hoping he'll do some mentions on air and let yeah. people know about it. But uh, that's the weekend, September so, 1st. 
this is uh you, you've got a history here you, you the last one you released yeah. <laughs> you hit right at the masters with pat yeah. boone so you kind of know how to how to schedule these things it sounds like well you gotta you know hit people when they're thinking about yeah. you know, stuff that, that relates and, uh, and it worked really well yeah yeah well um it's it's such a joy to meet you brad thank you so much for spending time with us um, I did want to ask you this. I, Rick mentioned it. There was a time in your life later when you turned your life to God. Tell me about that a little bit. Yes, and that was the inspiration really behind writing the book. I wanted to get my testimony out there. Now I really had a purpose of writing a book. Um, so 20 years after I won the gold medal, um, I won a bodybuilding contest. And uh, long story short, um, after I won this bodybuilding contest, I met a Christian man at the gym, and he was telling me I needed to read the Bible and go to church, and uh, I never did that. Um, my mother tried to get me to go to church when I was younger, but I wouldn't hear anything in church. It was just like I would be sitting there, but the Bible says faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. and hearing by the Word of God. You have to be able to hear God's Word or read it on a shirt. So that's what happened in my life. I was at the gym training a guy who was telling me I needed to read the Bible and go to church, but he would always have scriptures on his T-shirt while we were training. And uh, so the word was getting into my life, and uh, there was a battle going on inside my heart and inside my mind, and I thought I was losing my mind. And I told my friend this. I said, what's wrong with me? I just won a bodybuilding contest. All these dreams have come true. I've got some money. I've got a car. I'm meeting all my boyhood heroes, and, uh, but I feel like something's going on. And that day he turned around and on the back of his shirt was a scripture from Revelations that says, Behold, I stand at your door and I knock, and if you hear me knocking and open the door, I'll come in and dine with you and you with me. While I'm reading this scripture at that moment, it was just this feeling, the presence of God all around, and God was showing me how imperfect I was. Mm -hmm. And I always thought if someone asked me, Are you, would you go to heaven if you died? I said, sure, I go to heaven. I'm a nice guy. I treat people good. <laughs> But our good works are like filthy rags compared to the righteousness and holiness of Christ right. Jesus. And God was showing me this. I needed, you know, a Savior. And uh, so my friend turned around and he said, Brad, are you ready to turn your life over to Jesus Christ and make him the Lord of your life? And I said, yes, because I didn't know what else to do. I wanted to get rid of this uh, stress and this guilt and this anxiety that was battling inside of my life. And uh, I said, yes, what do I have to do? And... Uh, he just smiled and said, let's go in my car. And so we went into his car, and uh, he put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, pray with me. And, uh, okay. So I repeated a prayer. I just prayed, you know, Lord, please forgive me. Um, I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart, and I make you the Lord of my life. And while I'm praying this prayer, I was crying like I never cried before. I was crying so, uh, like a baby. But after I finished crying, I just felt a sense of peace. I felt... Uh, renewed. I felt like all that guilt, all that anxiety was gone, mm. and uh, it felt good. And I go home after I prayed that prayer, and the Bible says I got born again. And uh, so now I go home, I opened up the Bible, and it just, I couldn't put it down. And so for a year, I spent a year in my room getting to know Christ, reading the Bible. And uh, so that was the beginning of my walk with Jesus Christ, and I was probably about 30 years old. Yeah. And that, friends, is why you need to go see this movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> powerful, powerful testimony. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, you don't think about it. I heard a story last night where someone said um, that they just were dialing through the radio and they heard preaching and they said, what, they preach on the radio? And then they became, now they are a pastor. You know, they were lost. Yeah. And in the same way, here's a guy just wearing a T-shirt, you know, and willing to put his testimony on a T-shirt and it ministered to your life and it's powerful stuff. And so thank you so much for sharing your story. The movie is Never Give Up and uh, you don't want to miss it. Comes out uh, Labor Day weekend. That's right. You can go to nevergiveupfilm.com and look at the trailer and get some information about where theaters, theaters are around you. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Rick Eldridge, Brad Menz, so good to, uh, to visit with you. Until next time on Versations, just remember, it's gonna be all right.